Score, the podcast. The only show taking you inside the studios of the world's most celebrated composers and musical storytellers. Presented by Spitfire Audio. I'm Kenny Holmes. (laughs) I'm Robert Kraft. Actually, I'm Robert Kraft, and that's Kenny Holmes. We have a special episode today. I know that all of you are always excited to hear our releases on every Tuesday with a new composer. Well, because of a very special situation, our final episode of Season 2 is going to be released on Friday of this week. That's it. It's a news break because we have the guest Dave Porter, who scored El Camino, the Breaking Bad movie. And we have a really great favor from Netflix, which is we can play original music from the film, but we can't play it before the film releases, which is Friday the 11th. It's a little something called an embargo. It happens a lot in uh, interviews and journalism. However, we're lucky on Tuesday, we're going to do a special episode about something that I think more people need to know about, which is that our... Fabulous partner in crime, Mash yeah, Matt, Raider. You've been, you've been teasing at this for a while, and you've been a little, yeah. very, very secretive. Um, well, and then when you mentioned North Korea, right. it, it made sense why it was probably Nothing makes you think of film music like North Korea, right? It's, true. it's a stretch, but tell us how this all came about. And- so basically, and this was a good opportunity for us to be able to, to basically um, – announce what what has been going on behind the scenes and i i think i've maybe dropped very subtle hints to the both of you but um but we haven't really talked about it so this is kind of uh I was actually working with a couple news outlets to maybe put something out there but we thought you know what our score listeners are the people who would be interested in this and basically what we did you, you are let me guess you teamed up with dennis rodman <laughs> no it's something like okay, that okay um we uh you guys are well aware of of our movie, Score a Film Music Documentary, which came out a couple years ago. And uh, about one year ago, um, I came across a group called the Human Rights Foundation, which um, is involved in a lot of things in, in North Korea. A lot of it is trying to get information to the people of North Korea that do not have access to it. It's it's all, it must be uh, state-sanctioned media. Anything that they consume has to come from the state, has to be approved, has to you know, be be censored if it comes from anywhere else. So it's extremely locked down. It's not under, a free world. Not at all. And under under insane penalties. Uh, in some cases, it could be, you know, as as harsh as death. I mean, it's it's not a good place. And this is a country that's the size of it's half the size of California. You know, it's 50, uh, sorry, 26 million people or something that live in North Korea uh, that do not have access to the outside world. It's been locked down basically since the 1950s. So we came across um, this this group, the Human Rights Foundation, which is involved in basically smuggling uh, culture from from outside countries into this extremely locked down, repressive kind of uh, state. And the idea behind this is, you know, there's a famous video from 10 years ago, maybe 15 years ago of a North Korean defector who escaped. And she said, the thing that made me realize that you know there was more to the world than what I, what we were being told was I saw a depiction of love in Titanic, and Thank you. that was something that which Robert Robert worked on, um, but that was something that was so moving that they realized there's 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 more to life than than just what we're being told here in this very locked down world. So um, this group, uh, the Human Rights Foundation, said, you know what, we haven't done this before with pure culture. Usually they're smuggling in information or other tools or other, you know, things that that are more kind of politically uh, subversive, I guess, let's say. And uh, hmm. in this case, they said, um, let's try something that's more cultural diplomacy. And and being able to kind of bring the people of North Korea up to speed on the last 70 years of culture. You know, if you think about the biggest world culture that that exists in the world, it's film. And uh, the biggest uh, part of film that crosses all languages is the music. So um, they said your your documentary is a great ambassador for this this culture that the whole world has shared for the last half century. And uh, and that's something that 
we think people would really be interested in there. Oh, cool. So, um, so we started working on this project and lined up some different partners, um, some people that basically did this operation to um, load up thousands of flash drives, uh, little, little flash drives with uh, our movie on there, a Korean subtitled version of that, um, mm-hmm. as well as some other materials. And uh, they, they uh, started an operation to basically import those into North Korea through the kind of the farms at the edge of the country. And what they did was they uh, loaded up bottles of rice so they would float, and the currents washed those ashore on these farms. And so all of these, these, uh, these local farmers and other people that uh, are part of uh, these, these efforts usually will go through there and pick out the things that wash up on shore. And sometimes they're things that help them. And sometimes there's, you know, it's just trash or something else washing up. But, um, but that's how they get a hold of these flash drives. And there is a thriving underground, you know, black market for flash drives in North Korea. Uh, they expect, I think the Human Rights Foundation says it's something like one in four people um, has accessed black market material through basically through flash drives, <clears throat> excuse me, and um, which is an amazing number if you think about it. The, and that's growing every year is more and more people are accessing this. Um, and it's very difficult to track because you can plug it in this little USB drive to the video players that are given to them by the state to receive their state information, you know, the, what the government says they should be doing. So um, this is a really interesting project to us. And we said, yeah, let's let's do it. And so we we helped kind of fund the start of this operation. And now basically what we're doing is trying to continue that on um, for people who are interested in maybe being a part of this. Um, we we built a website, a uh, web page here, score-movie.com slash North Korea. And right on there, um, there are some ways you can help out. You can you know, get your own kind of uh, uh, score flash drive that we have. And for every one that you purchase, we'll also donate another one to North Korea and help kind of fund the efforts to keep this all going. Um, but that's uh, that's kind of the, the top secret mission here, which um, I didn't anticipate we would be in with a, a movie that's about isn't film music cool. But it's something that does reach out to a lot of other cultures and allows us to do what I thought score – the documentary did so well in the first place, which was celebrate this huge cultural thing that nobody had made a movie about before. And that's something that I think speaks to people all over the world. It's really, I mean, the whole thing is remarkable. I don't know which part of that was more surprising. I mean, the idea that it's in these bottles that wash up kind of rice filled bottles that's how you think about distribution networks well we have netflix and we have apple and we have films going to did theaters. you watch the new rice bottle movie that came <laughs> oh out my god but i really appreciated the fact that you said they're hard to track because my number one concern i'm all for freedom and democracy but my name's on that movie <laughs> um and so i think kenny's is too so do we we're not any... allowed in north korea right now. well okay phew I, if that's the only <laughs> thing i just don't know if people are going to be showing up in my rearview mirror because score the film was shown in pyongyang so uh matt what do you have any well i fear? don't think the word will be getting out very far because it's a it's a pretty underground thing um if, uh, if people are accessing it but it, no i mean i think it's it's um there's a you know we talk about humanitarian crises all over the world and um it's easy to think of north korea as kind of this this uh this isolated state of people who you know have this kind of tyrannical ruler and um you know that's been in the news a lot lately but think of that as its own kind of siloed state but the truth is those those people are um constantly under siege you know they're encouraged to uh to you know uh, turn in their own family members um, if uh, if they're doing something that's not approved. And um, it's seen as everyone reports to the state and anyone that fails to do that risks their own, you know, potentially incredibly harsh, you know, they could be imprisoned or worse. And um, this is something that, you know, the Human Rights Foundation did not view as politically um, sensitive because nice. this is, you know, this isn't a film going in there and saying North Korea is bad. Here's how, but this is something that is is you know can function as kind of a a soft 
uh, cultural revelation to a lot of people that have no idea that there's a a world of information um, it's really and a wonderful. world of you know extremely high end cinema that's they're they're not stories that say isn't North Korea terrible they're stories that say this is about love this is about you know uh, uh, something that's about defeating the bad guys this is you know Star Wars this is about um, it's it's crazy Indiana to, Jones it's James crazy Bond. to point out too that may, some people may not realize this but like Jaws didn't get released in North Korea. Right, and these these films that are like staples in our culture, in our world, all across the world, all languages, it it just doesn't happen. There. Right, it's not in the zeitgeist the same way. And now you know we can even you'll hear somebody go you know make a joke and say, Duh, dun. you know you know that that's oh they're they're that's a little reference mm-hmm. to the Jaws theme, from, and that could be someone in Japan. Right, it could be all over English. the world. Yeah, so and it's, it's so crazy baked in, but that. That's that's not a part of daily life in North Korea. And in fact, it, it, if that if that were, it could be dangerous for someone to reference something. You know, maybe not the tune, maybe not the theme, but some other aspect of a film like that. So, ultimately, you know, what we're looking to do with this, and it, what was intriguing to me personally, and why why you guys were kind of left in the dark, was I wanted to. Um, this seemed like an important cause, you know, to try to catch up millions of people. Potentially, if you think one in four out of 26 million people, you know, it's potentially millions of people that this black market reaches. And this is a a, you know, our movies, a two and a half hour or one and a half hour sliver of 50 years of culture and all of these things that, you know, the music that's rousing, that makes you feel that makes you realize like these stories are part of something um, that everyone everywhere else shares and uh, and this is something that I think is important for uh, for people of of North Korea to be able to know exists. You know, it, it reminds me of a situation that I didn't realize this is what your program was. I've spent a lot of time in Cuba, and in Cuba right. they have El Paquete, and El Paquete, the packet, is a weekly distribution to people that I think you subscribe with some grocery money, basically a small donation underground distribution of un, one terabyte per week you get of the latest episode of i mean they have everything you go to cuba yep. and they're watching the most contemporary netflix shows most contemporary broadcast from american networks but you're limited you're only limited by what can be put on the uh on the drive that well, you're given well i think given. the the biggest difference there is the stakes that are involved and north korea right. has so much more severe stakes absolutely than, and maybe not always the case because i'm sure it depends on the information also but in north korea there is a hard line and if you're going against that just the idea of going against what the government says you should be doing that's punishable by death what will happen to us if somebody is executed because they watch score a film documentary and that was their last film that they ever saw and they said i feel that my entire life has been transformed which of course we hear all the time by watching this movie but will will they want us to come over there and and well luckily there's no i mean for us there's there's no extradition to to north <laughs> korea so we don't have to worry about that but i i think the bigger point you know and this kind of thriving black market they do have a selection of American films and films from other countries, not all of them are subtitled in a language that they can understand. So that's very difficult. Some of them do speak a little bit of English, but it's pretty difficult. So the subtitles really help. But I think if the film is able to make that big of a difference on the culture there, you know, this is something that is an opportunity, I think, for a lot of people there to be able to access something could be a revelation, to a lot of people that are in the culture there. And this movie is such a good cross-section of the rest of the world that, you know, I think it's really kind of inspiring. And if we can be part of the change that allows certain people be able to leave the country, to escape the country, you know, that's a really amazing thing. Or if it's part of this kind of internal revolution of people realizing, hey, you know what, this system that we have is not working. You know, we have millions of people here that are all under the thumb of of these few ruling people that won't let us access very basic things won't let us access the internet and if it's a part of that also then you know this is a this is a force for good i think it's great i gotta ask because a lot of times when people take part in some sort of a charity or a cause 
you're able to see some change um, over time. But with this, there's probably a good chance that you won't even know if people received them. And I'm sure there's going to be people wondering, like, why do you even care? Why did you what what struck you to want to do this? Yeah, I mean, I think one of to your first question, part of our calculations in the original, you know, batch of flash drives that we sent over was you got to expect some of those are going to be found by guards or by, you know, someone someone who's not going to who's going to immediately throw those away. But even if it's a guard, you know, and the Human Rights Foundation had great insight as to this because they've done this before with more politically um, subversive material. But they said even if a guard finds it. Usually that's not somebody that's going to turn it in. That's usually someone that's going to pocket it and go check it out and go be exposed to it. And maybe they'll destroy it after the fact. But you've then exposed another person there to this new world that's outside of their, you know, their own kind of constraints of what they're allowed to access, what they're allowed to to be a part of. And maybe that's something that makes that person a little bit more sympathetic towards somebody that is, you know, caught for having contraband movies or whatever it may be. I mean, when you think about it, the idea of contraband movies is such a ridiculous idea. In, and I think everyone that has a connection to the internet understands this now. That information has to be able to flow. Otherwise, yet, you in, end up with these pockets that are so oppressed. In and, human history, contraband information mm-hmm. it has a huge you know, backstory of books being banned, books being burned. So right. there are cultures that, listen, Ulysses by James Joyce was ruled inadmissible to, well, you know, if you look back at book. the the founding of a, a country that never had it this bad, but you look at the United States and it started with a very kind of conspiratorial newsletters and, and you know, papers that yellow were being journalism. circulated. That, well, before even yellow journalism, but just the idea of, Maybe we're not uh, we're not a British colony. You know, those were letters that were treason that were being traded by early Americans. And a discussion should definitely be taking place, you know, whether it's always right to make one action or another. Who knows? But the information itself has to be free. And when you're talking about a shared culture that the rest of the world understands, you know, North Koreans have have been left behind for 70 years, almost 80 years. And uh, this is something that is, I think, important for people to be able to access. If nothing else, there's nothing that says they they have to access this information. But um, but it's something that we're trying to make available so that that culture can be accessed by people in North Korea. I think it's great. Just wonderful. Very cool. There is a video that shows some of the we actually shot some footage of uh, some of these rice bottles that were being loaded up. I think the sound. You won't hear this on the audio recording, but you can see this on the, um, you'll hear it just in the background. Where do you go to see the video? Score-movie.com slash North Korea. Um, And it'll also be a landing page on our main score-movie.com website. But it's a a short little video that shows kind of some of the conditions of North Korea, um, some of the efforts here. We went in there, and Robert's kind of looking at this right now. Kenny, I apologize, you can't see it. This is, you know, the, we started the video working with them, the Human Rights Foundation. The it's video of them putting the, putting the bottles in the river is really cool. It is worth going to score-movie.com, yep. North Korea, to check this out because this is a, an exceptional effort. And you'll Mash see here, there you go, Robert. This is the, uh, so this is cell oh, phone footage of just across a little passageway there, a little river there, which is a, a top secret, undisclosed location. But you can see it's a whole team of people that brought out basically trash bags filled with these bottles that they started floating around, floating across. You can oh, see that's close-ups cool. of Where are they? Are they, in, these. are they in South Korea? I'm not allowed to disclose. Thank you very much. <laughs> this is New Jersey. Yes, and they floated all the way to North Korea. There's a few spots where this type of thing happens, and uh, we don't want to out anybody there for uh, You know, I'm additional. a journalist. I have to ask these questions. I know. There I may know. be a movie in this story. Hey, Mash Raider, this is great. I salute you. <laughs> for doing making this effort i really do well you can go to uh, score-movie.com if you want to get a flash drive yourself um, we have it on one side it says score with the the score logo with the baton on the other side it says score in korean on the flip side and there's some pictures of that too 
with uh, with a baton underneath. Um, and how much are these? $20. We're going to have one of these made. It's a 32 gigabyte, I believe. And we also, that takes care of the cost to be able to do another run, basically, of all of this stuff. So we can duplicate a lot of drives, be able to actually get them over physically across the ocean to people who, who will be able to do things like this. So it helps fund further top secret missions like this. And if you want to be a part, score-movie.com. Very so cool. score the podcast as we can now advertise to all our fans. Doing good for the world. Maybe we can send them season one and two of Score the Podcast Whoosh, next. That's deep. That could be really. Although our Korean's a little rusty. Well, we I did go to it. the yeah, Olympics. We, right. I know, we like need to subtitle words. everything right. Um, well, thanks, Matt, for for sharing that uh, yeah. with uh, with the audience. And, it's a cool um, thing. Not what you'd expect again from a, a documentary about. We're music. full of surprises, though, aren't but, we? Uh, but it's cool. If we can share the culture, that's what the, the point of the whole movie was in the first place. And this is a, a whole new group of people who can be moved by music the same way that we have been. Love that. Very cool. Well, follow us at Score the Podcast. We'll put a link up to uh, the website there. And um, this Friday, our season finale. Join El us. Camino. Dave Porter, composer of Breaking Bad, Better Call Saul, The Blacklist. The Disaster Artist and the big film, El Camino. We'll see you Friday. See you Friday.